You've probably been hearing quite a lot about the ketogenic diet. In fact, it's become one of the most popular diets around and a lot of people are now starting to switch over to keto. So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a full unbiased explanation of the ketogenic diet. I want you to understand exactly how it works, how to create your own keto diet meal plan from scratch, and both its positives and its negatives, which believe it or not, an unbiased explanation of keto is rare due to the fact that mostly throughout all of history, there have always been those few people that would turn a diet almost into a religion or a cult. This same thing has happened before with the Atkins diet, the South Beach diet, and it's happening right now with the ketogenic diet. This ultimately leads to a lot of misconceptions about the diet. So there are a lot of things that people are doing plain wrong, and you may be making the same mistakes right now. Let's first start with the purpose. What's the purpose of the ketogenic diet? The goal is to force the body into a process known as ketosis, where fats are predominantly burned and used for energy rather than carbohydrates. Macros for the keto diet can vary from plant to plant, but you can expect to have anywhere from 60 to 75% of calories from fat, sometimes even more, then 15 to 30% of calories coming from protein, and 5 to 10% of calories coming from carbs. The most common recommended ketogenic macro split is 20% protein, 75% fat, and only 5% carbohydrates. This is referred to as the standard ketogenic diet. There's also the cyclical ketogenic diet where you would cycle five days of keto with two days of high carbs. Then you have the targeted ketogenic diet where you're allowed to have carbs before or after your workouts. And last but not least, we have the high protein ketogenic diet where fat will drop down to around 60% and protein jumps all the way up to 35%. Regardless of which ketogenic diet approach you choose, the purpose remains the same. By drastically reducing carbohydrates and replacing them with healthy fats, your body goes into a metabolic state known as ketosis. Now, it kills me when certain experts claim that the ketogenic diet isn't a low carb diet. That kills me. If five to 10% of your total daily calories coming from carbs, if that's not a low carb diet, then what is? Keto is just one form of low carb dieting, just like Atkins is a form of low carb dieting. For the people that treat keto like a religion, I can't wait to read your comments below. Either way, when you're in ketosis, your body becomes very good at burning fat for energy. Fats will be turned into ketones in your liver and those ketones will supply energy to your body and to your brain. To put it simply, your body becomes better at using fat for energy. Not only the fat that you eat, so the dietary fat, but also the fat that's stored on your body. One of the ways that it does this is by keeping insulin levels low. Insulin is a fat storage hormone that is released to help shuttle energy from the food you eat into your cells. The ketogenic diet is known to be one of the best ways, besides fasting, to drop your insulin levels lower. And low insulin levels are associated with fat loss. However, there is a misconception out there that your insulin levels will only go up from carbs. Protein will also spike your insulin levels, and if you eat enough fats in one sitting, especially the wrong type of fats like trans fats, that can spike your insulin levels as well. A lot of people that do the ketogenic diet just go absolutely overboard with the unhealthy foods that they pack into their plan. Sure, macro-wise, a bunch of cheese, mayo, and bacon will fit into a 75% fat allowance, However, for your health, these foods are not always the best options. Again, occasionally having foods like this as a treat on the keto diet, that's perfectly fine. However, from day to day, your 75% fat allowance is meant to be used on healthy sources of fat, such as avocados, coconut oil, whole eggs, olive oil, grass-fed butter, nuts and seeds, and fat found in unprocessed meat, such as beef, buffalo, salmon, chicken, thighs, ground pork, or ground turkey. And that's just me going through a few of the sources. Sources of fat with oleic acid have been shown to be really effective at dropping insulin levels as well. You'll find oleic acid in olive oil and avocados as well in many other sources. Due to the fact that this diet is so high in fat and moderately high in protein, it's very easy to feel full on this plan. This is one of the reasons why many people say that they don't even have to count calories when they're on keto. There are many studies that demonstrate that you can lose weight faster on a high fat, low carb ketogenic diet than you can on a calorie restricted, low fat diet. However, just keep in mind for yourself that weight isn't necessarily body fat. Carbohydrates aren't called carbohydrates for no reason. Carbo means carbon and hydrate means water. It's a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. When you get rid of carbohydrates, your body will lose a lot of water weight. 
But let's be real, everybody that's doing the keto diet is trying to lose body fat, right? Not water weight. Now, I'm not saying that keto isn't a great method to lose body fat, but I'm not entirely convinced that it's better than other diet plans at getting people to lose fat. Still, the keto diet does come with a lot of benefits. In fact, right now it's used to treat certain cases of cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, uh, epilepsy, Parkinson's, and even acne. With the low carb intake allowance, there are certain foods that you're going to have to totally avoid. Any food that's high in sugar like candy, soft drinks, smoothies, cake, ice cream, all that stuff obviously has to go. But you also have to get rid of almost all grains and starches and most fruits except for very small amounts of berries. Many people make the mistake of switching to sugar alcohols while on the keto plan. This is a big mistake because most of this food is not only processed, but it has also been shown to affect ketone levels. Besides foods high in fat and high in protein, you also want to make sure that you definitely include your green vegetables. That's going to be the best way to get your micronutrients into your diet plan, so your vitamins and your minerals, without exceeding your daily carb allowance, right? Now, I know a lot of people that do the keto plan, in an effort to save their carbs, they completely ditch vegetables. And believe me, there are a lot of people doing this that are losing weight right now thinking that they're healthy. But just because you're losing weight doesn't mean that you're being healthy. The problem with this is that the vitamins that you're supposed to get from your green vegetables on a diet that's already low in fruits, if you're skipping out on the veggies, you're going to have a really tough time getting it anywhere else. Another thing you should know about the keto diet is that it's great for endurance type training, such as running long distances or any kind of endurance type training. However, it's not the best for strength and anaerobic explosive movements. Your body prefers to use carbs for the more explosive anaerobic exercise. The other thing is, due to the keto diet being low in grains, you're missing out on some of those micronutrients and some people might just prefer to have some more carbs in their diet. So for some people it may be easier to actually stick to a diet with more carbs. Obviously the ketogenic diet is not for everyone even though most people can highly benefit from it. The one major point that I want to get across today is that no diet should be written in stone. If you want to variate your ketogenic diet and allow for 20% carbohydrates, you can still make that work and lose plenty of fat. Again, the religious keto people are going to be disagreeing with me like crazy right now and they're going to claim pretty much that the only keto diet is the keto diet and that's the only one that works. There are a bunch of different diets that work and keto is just one of the many choices that you have available to you when choosing a diet plan. If it fits for you, then do it. I'll include a link for a video that will teach you exactly how to structure your meal plan from scratch. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, feel free to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release new tips and tricks just like this. Also, to speed up your results, you can visit my website, gravitytransformation.com, where we have done-for-you diet, workout, and coaching programs. I'll see you guys soon. Pump it.